Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Enchanted Plumes. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. You're about to see my Allegro one minute overview and final thoughts. This is designed to see if this game warrants more of your time. If it does, just keep watching because then you'll see my full intro overview and final thoughts. However, if you don't want to be spoiled anything and you want to skip right to the full review, use the time index below in YouTube. Enchanted Plumes is a card game for two to five players where you're going to be building tableaus of different peacocks with beautiful plumes and trying to score the most points. So you'll be building peacocks with these cards starting with the top row and working your way down, hopefully all the way to the bottom where you complete that peacock. Because at the end of the game you're going to count up all the positive points except for the top row which are actually negative which is why you want low points here. But if you finished it you also get a bonus one point for every card so you're really trying to complete your peacocks. And you'll be making plenty of them over the course of the game. And after playing one or two cards you're going to be drawing and or swapping from your hand with the tab below which brings in lots of player interaction. Whoever's done the best job building the highest scoring peacocks at the end is going to be the winner. Enchanted Plumes has beautiful table presence with all those plumes and feathers, simple actions but excruciating decisions. You have flexibility of the number of peacocks and the size of those, and having to use a color from a previous row makes interesting decisions. Even playing just one or two cards can make a mind-numbing decision but gives you lots of flexibility. It has a lot of similarities to Lost Cities, discarding a card, hopes to get that back and use it for temporary storage, or not discarding suits to really mess over your opponents but it clogs your hand up and has a ton of tension trying to finish Peacocks before the end. But the game is best with two players. It's fine with three or four but I won't play with more than that but it is amazing and it got a saxophone serenade. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today it's all about those beautiful peacocks and them showing off those plumes. Today we're taking a look at Enchanted Plumes. This is from Calliope Games. It's a card playing tableau building game. Let me show you how it's played, I'll see you on the other side. In Enchanted Plumes, you're going to be building a tableau of different peacocks, multiples of them, and building these beautiful plumes that are going to hopefully get you a lot of points. Now over the course of the game, you are going to be playing cards to a tableau, again, either starting a new peacock or adding to one that's already there. Now this might be one that, a really good one actually, that has is finished at the end of the game. And you're going to be getting points for these in an interesting way. At the end of the game, you're going to, if you finished a peacock like that, you'll flip this up. All of the numbers, except for the top row, are going to be positive values. So we have 10 here, tw uh, 20, 25, 28. You're going to minus any numbers in the top row. So now we have 28 minus 3. This is 25. However, if you completed the Beacock like we did here, you're also going to get an additional point for every card. So we had 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. 35 point Peacock. That's a really good one. So as you can see, completing peacocks is great because you just went from, you know, that, that 25 to a 35 point peacock. So obviously as you're starting to build peacocks, the first line you want them to be as low numbers as possible and all the ones after that you want them to be the highest numbers as possible. But you might notice there's different colors of feathers here making up the plume. This part's very important as well. As you're building these, you're going to be building them one row at a time. Like the top row is always going to be first. So let's say over the course of turns we've played these and let's say we've added another one here. Now at any time you can start a second row but as soon as you do that the row that you've left can no longer be played to. And any card that you play on the next row has to be at least once in the row above it. So we played a red, that's fine. You could play more reds, but you're going to limit yourself as to which colors you could play after. Maybe later we play this. Sure, there's a brown there. Again, as long as you play a color that was in a row above it, you can do that. And again, you could duplicate colors if you wanted to, because right now the next two cards are going to have to be made up of these three colors. But if you had played this, well, now you've limited yourself a little bit because the cards here can only be red or brown in any combination. So you're trying to sort of get your way down to the bottom of that pyramid of the, of the peacock to finish it off. So maybe later we play this one here, maybe later we play this one here. Now to finish a peacock, it actually has to be a valid card. Like this one has to match these two colors because it's the only two colors there. And you play it face down so the other players don't know what card that is. It keeps people from being able to card count. Because there are 10 suits in the game and they range from 0 to 9, but you don't play with all the numbers. They scale down for player count. For example, you only play up to number 6 for a two-player game. 
Now maybe you've started Peacock and on your turn when you're gonna play some cards, you can play and start a new one. It doesn't matter how full this one is, doesn't matter how many other ones you have, you can work on as many different ones as you want. So on your turn, what you're gonna do is play one or two cards and you can play them again to either start a new one or add to a different one. So I can play one here and maybe play another card here or I can just play one card and be done. Or maybe I start a new peacock here and I add to that one again right here. So you can decide whether to play one or two cards and when to do either one of those is a big part of the strategy in the game. Now there is a row of five cards and there's a deck. And after you play your one or two cards, you have some choices. Uh, you can draw two cards directly from the deck right up at your hand, but your hand uh, is a limit of six. You can't have more than six cards in your hand, so you might draw this, but you might already, after drawing one card, already be up to your hand limit of six. In that case, for the second uh, part of this uh, drawing cards, you have to swap. If there's any card that you can see that you really want, you can't just take it. You have to swap something out from your hand with it, which adds a lot of strategy to the game because now you're giving something to someone else, so you want to look at what other colors they're working on, but sometimes you might slide a color in there that you really still need and you kind of use it in the next round. You play your cards and then maybe you swap to get that back and you kind of use this for temporary storage. So at the end of playing one or two cards, you can draw two, you can just swap two cards or you can draw one and then swap. Those are the things that you can do on your turn. That's pretty much it. You're playing one or two cards, you're doing the things I just mentioned that, it's the next player's turn. Seated towards the bottom of the deck is a peahen card. When someone draws it, the game will end immediately and everyone goes to final scoring. And you'll count up all your peacocks as I showed you earlier. Whoever's the most points is the winner. All right, let's first talk about the things I liked about Enchanted Plumes. Number one, beautiful table presence. I mean, all the colors, the way that they look, uh, the way that the feathers look, it's just, you're building it out on the table. I mean, people are gonna walk by and they're gonna go, wow, this looks really interesting. What are you playing? Because it does look so beautiful. And the fact that you sort of flip the card uh, upside, you know, backwards, uh, face down on top to show that it's the peacock itself and everything above it is it's, you know, are the, are the feathers is just like a cool way to do that. And it just looks beautiful on the table. This game has simple actions, play one or two cards, draw one or two cards and or swap one or two cards. And that's it. I mean, it's like play, pick up, that's it. But this game has excruciating decisions more on this later, but it feels very similar in like, doing something that sounds so easy, but yet so engaging as like a Lost Cities. Yes, I'm using this in the same sentence as the classic two-player card game from Rana Knizia. Um, I love that you have the flexibility of the number of peacocks you have and the sizes of those. Cause on your turn, you're either adding to or starting a new one. And that decision can get crazy throughout the game, especially towards the end where it's like, oh, I just want to, use, you know, I, I don't want to even play a card this turn because I can't finish this one. I don't want to start a new one. This one here is not great because it's going to limit how many colors I can play because it's this color I already have. And it's it's cool that you have the flexibility of, of doing that. Now, you, I like that come, working your way down, you have to use a color. Uh, that's one that you've used in the previous row because you're trying to build up and complete it, of course. The bigger, the better. If you complete it even more, you know, it's the best. But you can't get too greedy because you can't make it too big because a, a peacock too big, even off the bat, sometimes can be just too hard to close at the end and could really cost you. Uh, but I like that you're trying to figure out which colors you need and you're trying to play those and it's like, oh, do I, I this, this row here had four, the one below it has three. If I use two, only two colors for these three cards, I'm really limiting myself as to what I need to finish it. Other players can see that. They can try to deny me those two suits. Uh, it, it's interesting how you have to do that. It, it, it creates interesting decisions towards the end. Now, I like that you are playing one or two cards and your hand limit is six because sometimes like you're towards the end, you're like, oh, I really gotta get this, this peacock closed and finished. So I'm gonna try to play two if I have to, right? Sometimes you're like, oh, I just closed this peacock. I got another one. I definitely wanna start a new one. It's getting towards the end. I just wanna play one card because I don't have any other really good moves. But then if you only draw one new card, then you're gonna to need to swap something in the middle. And there's a lot of aspects as to like your hand limit of six really limits you, but in a good way that you're trying to figure out what to do. So even just playing one or two cards, there's a lot of decision-making that goes into that simple decision. And there are a lot of similarities, and let's dive into more of that, of lost cities in this game. I got a lot of those feelings in this. Uh, for example, discarding. 
velocity. Sometimes you discard a card to the middle, knowing that the other player's not going for it, and you're like, I'll just put it there for temporary storage. And sometimes you do that here. You'll put a card in there, you'll swap, try to take something away from some other player, and you're hoping that that stays there until it's your next turn where you can play cards and then swap and get that thing back. Uh, or maybe things have changed and you want it back, but I like that. That's a similar little nuance to Telocities that's really fun and it is here as well. Uh, I also love that that you're trying to, your hand limit's only six and you really need to keep what you need, but you're also trying to keep cards and not discard cards that other players need. Because hey, if someone really needs a red and I have a red four, that's pretty good. I don't want to just swap it in there, but if I have no use for it, what do I do? I hold it, I want to keep it away from them. That just means that either I'm going to clog up my hand or I'm going to want to start to work on red. But there's only so many reds, so if I'm doing that, then I'm fighting against them for the rest of the game for reds. Very much when you're not discarding suits and holding them on to mess with your opponent, very much like Lost Cities, I love that. Uh, and there's a ton of tension towards the end, trying to finish these peacocks right before it ends. Uh, it's This game is really, really is amazing. I was, I was quite taken back at how good this is. Now on the negative side of things, I think the game is best with two players. Uh, with more than two players, it scales, it adds different uh, uh, numbers. Uh, the numbers go up all the way to nine as you add more players. But in the end, you're not changing, so you're not changing the amount of suits, you're changing the amount of numbers, so that scales. But you're not changing the amount of cards in the middle. So really all it does is it add time, but it doesn't necessarily change the experience. So it's a longer experience, it's taking longer turns to get back to you, but in the end, you're still doing the same sort of thing. Sure, now you have multiple opponents to try to think about and stuff. I think this game is best with two players. Now, with that being said, I'm not going to turn down a three or maybe even a four player game. I won't play with more than four. It just, it's just too long to get back to your turn. There's a lot of thinking in this game. Um, but overall, this game is fantastic. It really wowed me. And for that, it is getting a saxophone serenade because it's going to get inducted into my gaming library. So let's go. <laughs> Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, it's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below.